though he happened to be playing better than Luna that day, he does grab two of those sets off of playing that one day better than Luna. So I'm going to say this is closer to a 50-50 than the numbers might tell you. Yeah, I mean, the number's currently 75% in favor of Snowy, but maybe closer to a 50-50, like you're saying, or maybe even just uh, a 60-30. Yeah, but... I'll say uh, I'll, and then, uh, missing 10 in there just yeah. because uh, who needs to go to 100 anymore these days? Sure. I am worried about Snowy, though, man. Uh, he's such a strong player, but his ability to close out games, and now that he's going against a character like Luna's Roman Reigns, that... Listen, Taros doesn't have too much of a problem closing out games. If Snowy gives him that time to find those KOs in the end, and who knows, he may not even go up in the first place against Luna. It was 66-33. It was yeah, there you go. I just I rounded in the worst way possible. I would have gone to 60-40 yeah. just because those numbers are a little bit easier in my brain. Yeah. But so far, damage relatively even between the two here in game one of the grand finals. Maybe a slight advantage to Snowy, but at the end of the day, he's going to be looking for that gauntlet recovery, so Luna knows exactly how to play around it. Hits the side air, doesn't hit the gravity cancel, neutral light, doesn't hit the recovery, and Snowy's still living the neutral light. Not enough. He was still playing very carefully, oh, though. You where were are seeing, you going? Yo, Snowy ended Goodbye. up falling there, and you see the taunt come out from Luna. The way Luna was playing, all of those whiffs that you called out, those were like overspaced whiffs that Snowy could not move in in time and then punish the whiff. So it's not like Snowy was on top of him and Luna was choosing the wrong move. It's, oh, okay, he, he dropped down so we could have enough time to yeah. fade out Reaction of the way time. of that, because that would have absolutely rocked him to his core. It was going so fast. Yeah, that axe toss would have been deadly. You see so many sweat beads come out, but still Snowy gets back up safely. Luna backs away, axe in hand. Nice two-piece coming out from Luna. And this is so scary as a Snowy fan, because you worry about Snowy's Ooh, ability okay. to close out stocks when he's ahead. Yeah. His ability to close out stocks when he's behind, if that's a problem, that's a big yikes coming from me, dog. which it did take him a little bit of time to get that stock away from Luna. Snowy, in the meantime, he's in the orange now, has put out some decent damage onto Luna's second stock, has him in the yellow after that, but look, then he just takes two hits further into orange, almost took a sidelight there. That weapon toss turned Snowy red. Oh man, Luna's playing so dangerously around these gauntlets from Snowy, but gets back up, the scoop up, the neutral light, not quite enough. Snowy's got plenty of horizontal movement here, and he'll be able to get back up safely. Damage is being done. Luna is one side away from another KO. Oh, there's the two-piece weapon toss, a little bit of a momentum interrupt. Yo, oh. Snowy! Scoop up, Luna's gonna get another stock, and Luna is one stack away from being up over Snowy. Weapon Toss is going to bump Snowy on the head just a little bit. Luna still in the lead. Snowy does grab Punish. a weapon. He goes for the big side heavy. We saw him run that earlier, I believe, against Luna and did find purchase with it, leading to a stock. But it's not going to be the same case here. Weapon comes into Luna's hands, adding up more damage on this stock. Snowy unable to close out this second one from Luna. <laughs> Weapon Toss is coming out from Snowy. Unfortunately, Gauntlet Weapon Toss doesn't quite have that much force, especially thrown raw in the face. He'll find the neutral light, though, and the damage is doable. Snowy's got enough health that he could actually close out game number one. Does have the weapon advantage. Luna hoping to come in and grab this weapon, but no, Snowy was high enough that he grasped it out of the air. There's at least one hit going the way. It's Axe v. Axe for these two players. We've seen a lot of Gauntlet play from Snowy so far this game. Ooh. He went for it. You saw that that sidelight did hit kind of awkward because Snowy was underneath, and usually the side air is the option there. Just didn't quite have the reaction on that one. He was kind of thinking about what to do. He's over to the hammer this time. A stomp side air might not be enough. That'll oh, but from do there, it. Not no, enough. Not okay, enough. it wasn't. Instinct possibility? No. no. He didn't even queue it up early. Didn't want to get punished. Knew he had enough to get back without it. Looking for the side airs. Oh, I thought the axe side air was going to land there. He wanted it. Looking for the stomps. Snowy's finding hits. Oh, he's got a weapon. He Oh, it clashes wow. out. He's living. Wow. Oh, man. Luna. He needs it. He gets it. The scoop up. And Luna's up 1-0. And that's what's so scary about Snowy not being able to close out these stocks any earlier because, yeah, he was adding up damage, and that was great. He was doing a fantastic job of it. But in the meantime, Luna was adding up a little bit more damage on him as well. And then all it took was that stray dare, that stray side air, the stray stomp, which leads into the KO combo. That's what's so scary if you're a Luna or if you're a Snowy fan, or especially scary if you're Snowy himself. 
Yeah, I mean, we even saw it in the damage numbers at the end. Snowy put out more damage, but what it comes down to is he wasn't able to get those KOs. That's the classic Snowy problem, the Snowy predicament that he finds himself in quite regularly. He's already down 0-1 in the set so far. We're moving quickly into the next one. No character swaps whatsoever. Why would Luna just caught a victory? And of course, Snowy, he's a Rayman, baby. Yeah, he's pretty much been Rayman all day, every day, and that's what's been working for him. It's won him a championship, and he's looking to win another one with it. But right now, Luna is finding a couple more hits, gets the neutral light, no chase into the sidelight. Instead, just trying to get that presence. Axon light is so scary. Every time it hits, that is such a chunk coming out of your health. So much damage coming out, swapping over onto oh, the hammer. He got the recovery. He's got wow. the stock. Wow. That was a KO in Orange Duke. That was so quick and so good. Really, what it came down to was Snowy had burned so many moves before getting towards that wall, and Luna denied the wall touch. And now Luna's got a massive lead, but that NSIG was a little bit risky. It was, but I mean, even if he got punished for it, Look, you'd have to be praying for a miracle if Snowy was going to find a stock there. Luna is still in the yellow, has oh, already chase. put out more damage on a Snowy's second stock than he has on his first. Picks up his own weapon, turns Snowy orange, swaps weapon, hits the side air, unarmed, oh, hits the recovery. Okay. Okay. Second recovery, picks up the weapon, might KO Snowy here very soon. Luna trying to send Snowy to the moon with those recoveries. Oh, my the goodness. weapon toss will send him to his grave. Luna is on the cusp of a three stock here in the grand finals of the Omen Oasis Championship. And we say that a lot because the idea of a three stock this late in the tournament bonkers. is very cool and very amazing. And but like, strong. he really is on the precipice <laughs> of a three stock. Not only with the way he's playing, but he has so little damage on this stock. Snowy has been unable to clinch these stocks from Luna, oh. who has been death gripping them the whole time. He's got so much health here. Snowy finds a two-piece, goes for the GCN SIG, was hoping it'll connect, but it doesn't. And now Luna again, back onto the main stage. Axe in hand, neutral light to punish. Such an easy punish Flash. for Luna there while Snowy again? was locked in the neutral light of his own. He's praying for the three stock. It's certainly real. He has so much damage on the Snowy and really not that much damage on his stock. It's gonna take something real juicy if Snowy wants to find the KO here. Neutral light, not even sending off the screen. Oh man, the downlight doesn't connect. Luna with the weapon tosses the fake out for the recovery. Luna is going to three stock Snowy in the grand finals. Bro, why even play fate at all, dog? What are you doing? <laughs> play this guy. This is your guy. This is your character. This is what you've known. He's been so good with the Taros and you know, I that is a question I can't answer. Why did you try the fate? But I at don't the end know, of the day, man. Luna's from, from Queens, and so uh, why are you trying fade? I'm Theros in over here! <laughs> that was culturally insensitive. <laughs> but I thought it was funny, so <laughs> no, it's... we let those go, <laughs> yeah. baby! Yeah, funny is definitely... Uh... And, and we learned something about Luna, knowing Ooh. that he's from Queens, New York. Oh my goodness. Look at the damage 182 difference. is not a lot of damage. Snowy really getting rocked that game yeah. by Luna. 554 put out from Luna. Again, 46 damage per engagement versus 18 from Snowy. If that 18 was a wedge salad, it'd be a really small salad. It would be. be like you a would, side you salad. would return that one because it's a scam. But if Luna's graph was a wedge salad, that's going to last you for a very long time. You can say, um, excuse me, I would like a box for my main entree before it even gets delivered to the table because you see how big that wedge salad yeah. is. That's filling up your tummy and you have so many leftovers for later. Someone's going to watch and be in the YouTube VOD comments being like, why do they keep talking about wedge yep. salads? Uh, they're probably doing it in Twitch chat right now the, the and run then back. on Twitter later. It's, 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 a, it's a callback joke, all right? Well, right now, Luna is one game away from getting the best of five, getting the reset, and getting us another best of five. This is huge. I could not have predicted this in a million years. I would have predicted the overall circumstances or some of the circumstances that led us here. But once we got here, I certainly would not have predicted the absolute domination coming out from Luna, especially in last game. Yeah, that was huge. I mean, especially like, again, by most accounts, numbers wise and everything, Snowy's favored to win this. So when that happens, you don't expect Snowy to get three stocked 
ever, unless he makes a misstep, which I guess you could argue did happen, but it wasn't like he was SDing. It wasn't like he ran off and decided to ground pound into nowhere. He was fighting it out against Luna, and Luna was just getting the better of him. Any critical errors that Snowy made in order to be capitalized upon in this way also required for Luna to recognize those errors and find the most destructive way to punish them, which obviously Luna has done. But if we look at the set counts between these two, even the ones that are favoring Snowy, it's been a lot of game fives. Or in the case of a best of three back at the Summer Championship 2021, it was a best of three, made it all the way to game three. So these two players, when they come up against one another, they tend to go the distance, which based on last game, you would not have drawn that conclusion if that was the only data set for you to look at. Yeah, people coming in who've never seen these two fight, if they watched game two, they're like, okay, Luna wins this Yeah, Lu Luna is the GOAT, uh, Snowy is mid, and Luna's my guy. Yeah, absolutely, but you gotta keep in mind, Snowy is the most recent champion. Certainly. He's the winter champion, and Luna really turned on the heat gun and melted some of that Snowy. This this Rayman that has looked immaculate in the past, starting to slip a little bit. And this Taros, this Roman Reigns that, I mean, even Luna didn't initially believe in in their previous set and winner's finals went with the fate the whole time. And then all of a sudden had to swap to this one. And man, incredible work is being done by Axe players today. And incredible work is especially being done by Luna against one of the better Axe players in North America, talking about Snowy. Luna right now is showing why Heyman is, t uh, is team head of the table, right? Heyman's joined him and now he's going up against Brock Lesnar. And right now it's uh, Snowy looking like Brock Lesnar. We're going into game number three and we'll see if Luna can do it to him. And we are going to Apocalypse, which based on the previous game, this could be the Apocalypse for Snowy here. As it's 0-2 so far, Luna is up. A victory for Luna here leads to the bracket reset, which would certainly take some of the wind out of Snowy's sails. Yeah, that would be a, a definite momentum boost. Of course, Luna already has a lot of momentum off the back of that three stock in game number two. But here we are, game number three. Damage relatively even. This isn't the, the burst out that Luna had in the last one. And Luna is actually behind here. That nice side light neutral air from Snowy does turn Luna red. Gauntlet's coming in for Snowy. That down air putting him a little bit further into the red. Charging up that signature over the corner, and despite the long range that it has, Luna's able to get up, over, and around it, and find the punish on Snowy in time. Yeah, just found a down air. Unfortunately, that he wasn't able to follow up off of it, and Snowy is finding multiple hits. The weapon toss doesn't go over the corner, goes for another one. Luna finds his way back onto the stage, but man, Snowy, he's going to be looking for those down toss recoveries for a while. Oh, 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 oh the KO did it! That thing is so good. I love it. Well, I hate it, but I, <laughs> I love it when I'm doing commentary. You love watching it. Yeah, yeah and, it. and a Taros player uses it. that one, especially GC side signature is so nasty because it picks up a grounded person. It picks up an aerial person, but Snowy does not get too shook by it. Immediately, the equalizer comes out, and I'm not talking about the movie with Queen Latifah or Denzel Washington. I'm talking about Snowy here. I was so confused on why you started with Queen Latifah when that was it's definitely could, a Denzel I, movie. I couldn't remember <laughs> Denzel Washington and the Equalizer TV show has Queen Latifah in okay, it. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, Denzel. You're a legend and I should not have forgotten your name. But second stocks for both of them. Slight damage advantage to Snowy. The recovery, ooh, doesn't hit the sidelight. You saw him trying it. Luna's going for a lot of weapon tosses and suddenly it's leaving him disarmed. Has the hammer. Neutral air is coming out. Okay. Only one juggle opportunity, but does find two hits. Once Snowy lands, stays low on that wall. Out of the way, those big bombs that Snowy loves to throw over the corner, but we haven't seen too many of those. Ooh. Okay. Okay. No punish on that one, though. Still had the dodge, so Luna wasn't going to overcommit and potentially risk getting turned on. Down like ground pound, and Luna is down to his final stock here in game number three. This is a solid clawing of the way back into this fight for Snowy, who is in the lead now, but still, he's fighting against a Taros player, one of the best Taros players that we've seen in quite some time. 
Snowy's in the red. That neutral light does send off screen, but not all the way to the blast zone. Weapon spawn comes in favor of Luna. Second one comes in right in the clutch for Snowy. Yeah, Snowy knew exactly where that one was going to spawn. You saw him running to the right side. Weapon toss thrown away. Luna not able to get a hit onto Snowy, though. No capitalization. Snowy's finding more hits. Luna needs this side air, and he finds it. Final stocks here in game number three. A win here would be a reset for Luna. Luna just a little bit behind, does have weapon advantage. You're seeing those neutral lights come out. That gives him a lot of range over Snowy, who is unarmed in this moment, but it doesn't require that like full commitment of a side light. Luna starting to find some hits. Axe v Axe. Snowy being a lot more patient. You can see the way he's sitting back to the edge and it's working out for him. He's getting more hits on him. Both of them are so patient right now. Luna's starting to find some more hits, but he is certainly behind here. Snowy with the gauntlets in hand. Neutral light. Couple more of those, and these two players are going to be dead even with one another. That's what Luna's hoping for, to fight his way back into this one, then secure the lead, find the KO. Oh, spaced out the neutral light. Goes for the end, Sig. No punish from Snowy. Oh, this is scary, though. Luna gets below it. They were like stacked on top of one another, so close, taking the same route back to the main stage. The neutral that light. neutral light doesn't even send off screen just yet. A center stage neutral light will not be a KO option onto Luna. Here comes the hammer. Snowy knows oh, that there's ah! that hammer on the edge, the neutral air, almost taken off the top, but not quite. So close to doing it. That won't do it. He doesn't get the chase dodge for the recovery. Luna's living. He's thanking his oh, lucky stars dude. the stop side air. One more hit, one more hit, he avoids the recovery. Oh, snap. Wow, that almost KO'd. If that was dead center stage, I think oh. we would have had a KO there. The recovery was too He's low. He's still living. The recovery is not enough. This could go either direction. The weapon toss almost does it. The side light almost puts him off screen. Everyone's That's one it. hit, and Luna's going to get the reset. A 3-0 bracket reset coming from Luna. My heart is beating out of my chest. That was such a nerve wracking finish. And we're not even done. That was Snowy trying to deny a three a reset. And that was Luna getting that reset. So we're going to our final best of five here at the Omen Oasis Championship. There were so many moments where Snowy hit a KO move in a non-KO position. He hit the neutral light, but he was too far right on the wrong side of the stage. He hit the unarmed recovery, but he was too low on the left side, man. That has to be so brutal for Snowy. Look at the damage, dude. He has to put out the most damage to kill any opponent he goes up against. That makes those in-game situations so tough because Luna puts out 550. Even if he wasn't playing a hard-hitting Taros, it would be a little bit higher, but it would never be anywhere near the 674 that Snowy has to put out like every game. I mean, you can just see based on the peaks of the yellow uh, mountains, right? They're just so much higher than Snowy's peaks are. Look at that first one. Look at that last one. Luna living so much longer than Snowy is, taking so much more damage per stock. The vertical height of that graph is determined by that final stock of Luna, how much damage he is taking, or on the other side, how much damage Snowy has to do before he actually finds the KO option. That is the Snowy conundrum that he still has not found the right ingredients for just yet. He's been close. That game right there was a battle of pixels. There was such narrow margins of victory and Luna was able to find it and it got him the reset. So now we've got another best of five and it's, it's gonna be a nail biter, Sparky. The momentum has to be in favor of Luna here. Not only did he just get the 3-0, but he was behind in that game, ended up fighting back into it and getting the victory, giving him that 3-0. So even though that, that final game was a little bit touch and go at certain moments, especially if you're a Luna fan in that, he still overall was able to wrestle it back from Snowy, still showing those problems that Snowy consistently has and that Luna can consistently capitalize on. Well, we've got some highlights of that first set so that you can see just how much they had to get through to get to the position they are in right now. So many weapon tosses to set up, so many fantastic follow-ups. That right there, Snowy was so consistent on, right? The D-Light into the recovery, but in that final game three, 
he missed the input. The nerves got a little bit of the better of him. There's that dare, dude. That's so scary. If Snowy goes for a non-true option and Luna's there ready to hit the down air, that can be a KO option in orange when you're really high in the air. Phazon, I think, went for an option that was not true, I think specifically on Dauntlets as well, and Luna hit the wake up down air immediately, and I don't think he got the KO, but he at least got some juggle opportunity off of it. Yeah, those hammer down airs can be so good at turning situations around, but here we go into the final set of the North American Omen Oasis Championship. Luna versus Snowy, game number one, and they've both got axes in hand. And that, dude, that side light side already came out from Luna and Snowy is so yellow. Quick. And then the neutral light came out. One more hit, he's gotta be orange. That neutral air almost, yep, there you go. Yep. There's down the light. down light, Snowy is in orange. This is a very scary amount of damage output if you are a Snowy player or if you're a Snowy fan. Yeah, and here comes the big side airs, the weapon toss, one more hit, and Luna's gonna have the lead. Oh, he's a little late on it. Snowy able to survive, goes for the turnaround. There's the side air. Oh, he's able to grab that weapon, too. Went for the D-Sig right over the corner. I don't know if he wanted a ground pound and ended up getting stuck on the corner, or if he really did want that D-Sig. Wait for that Snowy Hurt Box to peek up so he gets the spike with the D-Sig. Yeah, that Axe D-Sig can be really good, especially if you catch it just right. Goes for the weapon toss. A little oh, bit wide that on that so one. Close. Doesn't hit the down light. And Snowy fights his way back again. Luna again, fast falling, hoping to reach up with that recovery to send Snowy down to the bottom blast zone. Both players dead even on this one. We are over a minute 10 into this game. The pressure, I'm sure, is already so oh! much on both of these players. Snowy goes off stage. Luna has been fishing for that recovery several times now. Snowy played right into his plans. Yeah, really good fast fall from Luna to get that recovery. Snowy, though, might be able to even this up quick. Luna's gonna live for a little while longer, but he needs to get damage on the second stock. Won't have nice the opportunity. Pick Fantastic pickup there for Snowy. That's exactly what he needed. Juggling the weapons, he's gonna have his choice. He goes for the gauntlets here. Luna waiting for the weapon spawn. It favors Snowy's side after Luna went over to the left. Two stocks so even. We've seen them go the distance. We've seen them go to game fives before, and this could easily be another one. Falling there, second there, the chase dodge up. He wants to keep that juggle going, but Snowy gets past it. Ooh, Snowy's movement, very strong right now. Did take some punish there. Found a nice two-piece, avoiding the nares, avoiding the side as well, and finding incredible punish. Already has Luna in the orange. Yeah, you see Luna going for a lot of wake-ups and they're not connecting. Snowy finding more momentum here on the second stock of Luna. Stop, not gonna connect. Scoop up, just gonna put him on the stage. Oh, I can't believe that weapon toss didn't hit. That must have been so close. The bounce angle, there's the side sig. Luna doesn't find his way around it to get the punish this time. A little bit of nerves. Luna with the raw side sig, fighting ghosts and the down air. Luna's not going to oh. touch. Snowy with a big lead over Luna now. Do you think that side sig was a misinput, a bad decision, or a bait? I think he's going for baits. Like he did a okay. he did an axe down yep. sig in the middle of the map earlier that got punished from Snowy. Like I feel like Luna's trying to bait Snowy in, and they're technically working. Snowy's going in, but he's getting punished for them. Yeah. I, I don't think any choice of those is definitely the wrong one. I think possibly going for the okay, bait. Okay. Very smart choice there. He even gets the KO, ends up evening up this game. Oh man, they are so closely matched. They're so even right now. Luna with that weapon advantage and he's trying to push it, but he backs away and Snowy's able to pick up an ax. The ax v ax game. Tends to favor Luna here, at least in the gameplay that we've seen so far today. Back away. Nice rebuttal to Snowy's side air. Oh, man. Getting more over That's the hammer. Three and the hammer hit. The only trade there was the weapon toss for a hammer neutral air. Oh, but Snowy's on the gauntlets. Luna, we've seen him struggle a little bit to find these finishers when he goes over the hammer, right? He's generally looking for the stop side air. He'll find one. Needs to finish this stock off of Snowy. Weapon toss connects and that'll do it. Luna is up 1-0 in the final set. So if you're Snowy right now, this has to be a really tough moment. Oh, because this is stressful. The bracket reset is already hard. That oh, already yeah. puts a lot of pressure on you. Add the pressure of that it was a 3-0. And you Luna got three stocked in there. And you got three stocked in one of those. And the final game seemed like you might have wrestled it back. The hope was there and then absolutely dashed. 
then we get the bracket reset. It's a moment to breathe. It's a moment to quote unquote reset everything. And then you get bodied in this game, this game one that was supposed to be your breath of fresh air, your way to fight back into this one, the clean slate. And we're seeing more of the same history from Luna. Luna looking so good. He's two games away from being crowned the Omen Oasis champion. Snowy, the most recent champion, wants to go back to back. He wants to start the win streak, but he's got to beat Luna three games. Back over here on Apocalypse. First weapons are the Axe for Luna, the Gauntlets for Snowy. Hits the top side and he keeps it going with the neutral air right after the ground pound makes connection. Again, Axe v. Axe certainly favors Luna. Snowy will get a hit and then Luna will get three and a down oh signature God. and a KO off the top. Oh my goodness gracious, Luna. With the gravity cancel down sync at the top of the map, Luna is feeling himself. You're starting to see that momentum. You're starting to see the APM rise as he's feeling good right now in game number two. Controlling the juggle ground. again. Man, the juggle opportunities from Luna. He hits oh the my side God. Air, dude. Snowy is completely broken. If he, if he, do oh my God, he hits the side air. Luna, is he going to three stock again onto the most recent champion? That would be an insane outcome to these games that we've seen so far today. One three stock is enough. But we might be blessed with yet another one. Snowy, he's adding up some damage here. Might I remind everyone, Luna's first top three ever was less than a month ago. His first top eight ever was less than two months ago. Luna is looking so impressive. If he can three stock here, that would be big. Nice D light there. He's not going to get the weapon pickup. Does take an axe neutral light, but again, Snowy is having to put out so much damage to finish off these stocks. If Neutral Light on Axe is your only KO move, it is a sometimes suitable KO move, but if it's your only KO move, that means your damage output has to be so high, which means you have to do it quickly if you want to outpace your opponent. Nice. He finds the recovery. He will deny the three stock. The Ego is saved for a little bit, but he is very far behind Luna here in game number two going to have weapon control here. You saw Luna make the move over to that soft platform. Finds a weapon very quickly. Yeah, actually it. throws it away quicker than I would have expected. That was really a snowy move right there. Yo! Oh, snap. He just wanted to bait snowy onto the oh, soft platform. Okay, good dodge up. Get in the nair. He's got such a big lead here. Luna's going to start playing with his food a little bit, but he hits the neutral light. Almost going to finish it. Thought that might pop Snowy on the head. Had the dodge. Luna playing very carefully, though. He knows the position that he's in. He doesn't have to go off stage with something crazy, something risky. He's already made so many highlights. Even if you want to play for the highlight reel, brother, the reel is full. We have to swap out for another reel of film or another flash drive. Oh, my goodness. Luna is five games in a row. Here's the oh, D-Sig, baby. Oh my, that was so oh, dirty. That was so nasty. Absolutely oh, filthy. Run it back. Here comes. This is like that uh, Simpsons clip, right, where you can see his heartbreak. Like, that's Bart yeah. just rewinding the clip, and you just see the sadness on Snowy's face. That's what's happening right now. Man, what a game from Luna continuing this. I just, I can't believe Luna's doing what he's doing right in front of our very eyes right now. Bro, why'd he play Enchantress? Though? I don't know. He got 3-0'd in the winner's yeah. final. To go into the grand finals for the storyline to 3-0, reset, and he's currently up 2-0 over Snowy. I I'm telling you, he was just playing that because he had confidence. He's just like, okay, I might take an L here, but we'll see if it works. Okay, I took an L. It did not work. Now we know what we're really going to do. He had to lose with the fate to feel the confidence in the Taros. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a there's an analogy there somewhere, but man, oh man, Luna is up big. Look again, the graphs from Luna, <laughs> that stock it's, it's lasted so, so long, and it's still he still took more damage on that first stock than Snowy did on any of his stocks. Yep, and then even that final stock, dude, there's like no damage on that whatsoever, and there is a significant chunk of time. It's not like he spawned back in. Found a side yeah. air in five seconds, and that was it. No, he spent some serious time on that final stock as well. Five to 10% of the game. Snowy's not on Rayman. The swap. 
Bro, he's playing Koji? To the Koji. All right, hold For on. game number three in grand finals. This three, is two, do okay, or die. On. Snowy is hoping that the Koji is going to be the final answer to Luna here in the grand finals. We got to figure out what the deal is with this Koji pick. That is, it's very low on his characters played. He has a level 36 Koji. It's like in maybe his top 10 characters. He plays more Lucian, Kor, Ulgrim, Baraza, Rayman, Roland, Bodvar, Brax, Zol, Scarlet than he plays Koji. I mean, just look at the skin game. He's free to play right now with this Koji. This is base Koji, and we'll see if it works out for the ground pound connects. Luna hits a down air. Snowy, he's going to fall. Luna Yikes. gets the first stock with the unarmed. Snowy has played one ranked game this season on the Koji, and it was an L. <laughs> so I'm not sure where the uh, confidence in this Koji pick comes out. Maybe he's just trying to throw anything and everything at the wall to see what works against Luna but he's making that call very late. Yeah, this is, if you're gonna make the swap and hope that something works, usually you do that pre-reset, but now we're in the final moments and Snowy's on his last two stocks here and he's hoping that this'll do it. This is straight up like the Hail Mary play when if the Hail Mary actually gets caught, you're still significantly behind. <laughs> it's not even like the Hail Mary to win the big game. It's the Hail Mary when it's the score is like 0 to 21 and you're hoping that'll yeah, put you, you 7 you to 21. Get shut out. Yeah. Oh man, dude, Snowy is in such a tough Down position. Delay recovery. Delay recovery. Okay. Maybe he wants a more consistent option to find the KO. It is just strange that he comes out with the Koji of all picks here when there are other characters that he has that have consistent KO options. Yeah, I would have expected at least some sort of carryover to the Rain Man if this is what he wanted if he wanted to swap at all, but man He's getting some good damage. You know what? I'm respecting the Koji. He, it's not completely awkwardness. He's getting some damage built up. Luna looking to finish the stock. Doesn't hit the cider. Hits the weapon toss. Another weapon toss. Might need another one. No. Nope. And now Luna is one stock away. Snowy finds himself in a very precarious position on a reasonably unfamiliar character in, based on previous tournaments, reasonably unfamiliar territory as well. Finding himself on somewhat of the losing end of this stick here in Grand Finals against Luna's mighty Taros. Snowy has zero silver medals. He has one gold and two bronzes. This very well could be his first ever silver medal in competitive Brawlhalla. Finding some flow with his bow on the later stages of Luna's second stock. Hoping he can maybe move a little bit quicker, maybe a little bit harder to punish. Luna's been doing a pretty good job of punishing this very high dexterity character though so far. Nice side air. We're finding ourselves reasonably even here. Is he about to be on the board? Stocks are even. Snowy on the Koji. Luna on the Taros. He's one stock away. Snowy, he's got range advantage with this bow. Luna jump. He's trying to be careful here. You see the way he engages is still very careful. Oh, that back-to-back -back side like that is some damage. Snowy, probably oh. one more hit, and he's going to be in the red, which means a little bit more damage than a straight side air, a straight down air. Hardly any of the moves on Axe will be a KO option again. Playing very carefully. This is a nail biter. Little damage advantage to Luna, but Snowy's got the consistent KO tool in this sword. A downlight recovery could Yo. do it. A downlight nair puts him off screen. It throws Juggle. away the weapon. Can Snowy put himself on the board? Oh, this is so scary. Weapon advantage. I don't know if a oh, side air will KO from Luna here. Oh, Silent Sun! Oh, it'll do it! It does! Luna is your Omen Oasis champion! He did it six games in a row over the most recent champion, but that title has been taken. Luna is now the champion. Yo, you picked the right guy. I'm so smart. You actually are here. Oh Normally I would downplay that because the cameras are rolling, but you you nailed it. Hey, where's uh where's someone to clip that earlier part where you called me a fool uh, and then put this, that with sorry, this? Sorry, this is live. It doesn't exist. Let's, it let's doesn't find happen. that one. We've already moved past That's it. That's a really good moment. That's I think not tweet it at me. That's a really good moment. Make sure you tag who is Sparky in that tweet too cuz it'll be funny. But now you see one of the downfalls of being a Snowy fan. Luna capitalized on every mistake that Snowy made. Anytime yep. Snowy was unable to close out a stock, that meant either a lead that Luna already had or more damage that he could add up to extend that lead that Luna already had. Yeah, you can see consistency. Snowy was...